This episode of Strange Love brought to you by Treasure Licious. Good evening. This is Strange Love, and I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. Good evening, and welcome to a very special, very serious edition of Strange Love Live After Hours. I'm your host, Cammie Chaos, and as always, I'm joined by Dr. Normal. Yes, this is Dr. Normal. Um, our special guest this evening is, is Josh Bancroft. Hi, everybody. Josh, we're a little worried. Uh-oh. I think we need to talk, what, Josh. What, what did I do? Everyone here really cares for you and we want you to feel safe and comfortable we need to talk about your shoes oh no it's your footwear i I dreaded this day (laughs) josh i was crying not laughing really um (laughs) i i've never ever seen you without your orange crocs it's it's a rare occasion i i think i've only made one or two public appearances without them when you got married josh were you wearing your orange Crocs? You know, actually, the Crocs came afterwards. Okay, good. That makes me feel a little bit better. But but now we're going to show you some other sensible shoe options. This is an intervention. So, <laughs> a Josh, shoe intervention. Um, please pay attention. We are concerned. We are concerned about your footwear and your feet. It's because we and care about you. I think we need to note that if Aaron Hockley continues down the Croc path, we'll have to have one of these for him as well. Yeah, Batman Crocs. What's up with okay. that? Okay. So, Dr. Normal, hand me the first pair of shoes. So, we, hold, we're hold starting with the these camera. because they slip on. And they're very comfortable. Oh, very nice. Yes, yeah, so Dr. Normal has has walked all around many Great convention for trays, places. Great for trade shows. Mm-hmm. This is the uh, doc, Dockers, you know, the, the pants Dockers. This is their yeah. shoe line. This is a slip-on. I don't like slip-ons so much, but these are very comfortable. Mm-hmm. They have a cushioned sole. Yeah, um, they're very snazzy. Nice. And when you go on a business trip, you can easily roll up all of your socks inside of them. Oh. Okay, Dr. Normal, pair of shoes number two. This is a more casual solution. Although, I, I'm going to have to talk to Dr. Normal. I think he only owns black shoes. Um, he, he could do with a little pop. Of well, color I, there. I think I think Josh could do with some black shoes instead uh, of Maybe Josh crocs. could do with some black shoes, you but know, maybe you, Dr. Normal could yeah. consider some color. You know what orange Crocs are good for, Josh? Gardening. What's that? Gardening. Gardening, Gardening and children. And children. Uh, hence you know, the purple Crocs, our daughter's purple Crocs yes. there on the... Uh, so those so, are skater shoes. So these are... Yeah, but, Skechers, I think. Well, Dr. Normal is not a skater, but yeah, these are some black suede I was being hip. Sneakers. I was being a hipster. He's a hipster. Hold those up. <laughs> Josh, very comfortable, though. I'm all about the comfort. But they take a few extra moments because you have to tie them. Those, those look good as well. Okay, and... And let's go with the Chaos Family per- personal favorite. It's hard to reach these shoes. These, a little more time, incredibly durable. And if you're walking in acid, you should be fine because they have acid-resistant soles. We've got Doc Martens. Yeah, no, hi- uh, hipsters, Doc Martens. that's right. Hipsters still wear the Dr. Martens. Mm-hmm. Very, very, very popular. It's not hip if you say Dr. Martens. You have to say Doc Martens. They say that in the UK. They say Dr. Martens. Yeah, but that's hip in the UK. I Except, saw it on the young you. ones. Is it, is it Zozo Bear when it's on, um, on Twitter? Is that yes. accurate? So we have a, our studio audience who also very concerned about you, Josh. Um, we have Zozo Bear and Chris O'Rourke. I, I appreciate your concern. And of I, course, I will give due consideration to the other shoe options that have been presented to me. Oh, we're we're almost done, but not quite. Uh, I have a question. Oh, there's more. Oh, yeah, we we do have more. If you if you like Doc Martens, then you might want to consider something along the lines of this. Now I know these are. Yeah, work with us, Josh. I mean, <laughs> you know, is anything here that you like? Kind of your your style, these or these are a little small. I, I like the color on those. Yeah, these are mine. You can tell because they're not black. What is that color? <laughs> it's it's called ox blood. Ox blood. Yeah, so you might, might look good in some ox blood. Yeah, ox blood might be a really good option for you. That's right. I had a, I had a quick question. Oh, oh, Chris has a question. D- does anybody know what uh, Doc Martin's doctorate is actually in? In Martining. Ooh. That's a yes. fantastic okay. subject. <laughs> We're starting to wrap up, but if you like boots, 
Then we could move on to something maybe a little bit southern. Now, I got these on a business trip 20 years ago in Dallas. Those are snakeskin cowboy boots. If we're not careful, someone's mm. going to hold a shoe intervention for us. Yeah, I know. Yes. <laughs> I don't know if I can do the cowboy boots. I understand completely, so let's try an, a more practical pair of boots. Um, this is going to work great on the <laughs> audio podcast. <laughs> this will be way. fantastic. Um, <laughs> last night, the first time I actually met Josh in person uh, was last night, and I was wearing these fantastic boots that are maybe a little cross-dressy for you, but still maybe are- some... We don't judge here at Strange Love Live. I mean, you know, it's it, it's whatever whatever works. Power boots. Those heels are a little higher than I like to wear. Yeah, let me give you a secret. Three and a half inches, and uh, you walk around on them for eight hours, and the uh, balls of your foot get bruised. So maybe I don't can... don't wear those. However, so, so wait. I have I have a, I have a problem. Ahead. Yes. There, there's actually a reason I wear orange Crocs. Oh, do tell. I I tell people they're my. RSS feed evangelism shoes. <laughs> so, so if we could, and, and then people say, and then people say, "What's RSS?" And I say, "I'm glad you asked." And I go into my thing. So, so if we could get those big, high, oxblood Doc Martins in or RSS orange, you'd be okay. What if we could get I, RSS I would wear to change Doc its Martins color? In a heartbeat. I've seen orange Doc Martins. Okay, Doctor Normal keeps handing shoes. This is the last, last pair, pair of shoes. You know, you know, I have to admit that um, my public appearance without Crocs was this week in <gasps> Portland because it was too slippery. Oh, so as the rainy season happens, are you yeah, going to... Yeah, with the leaves and everything, I, I'm thinking the Crocs, and they also, they, they don't keep the water out. For, no, they don't. But if you want to keep the water out, you could consider something like these lovely little um, rain boots. Yeah, those are I our, think my daughter has those. Yeah, those are, yeah they're our daughters. Those are our daughter's <laughs> boots. It, it, we're not suggesting you'd wear something like that, but, you know, kind of the orange kind of, you know, rain Although boots. I have plastic. seen orange rain boots in this. You can get Joe's, I think. This style, orange, without the cute sunflowers. Hey, Dr. Normal, I don't have any rain boots. Oh, yeah, I know. But you have every other boot. But, but I don't have any rain boots. <laughs> Right. Okay. Well, sure. You do have she, Crocs she need, regarding. She needs though. boots. I think that's code. I need. I do. Did you know? And I don't usually admit this. I own a pair of Crocs. For gardening. I garden. And garden. Gardening only. They're great gardening. I wear them shoes. for two things. I garden in them, and I take out the garbage in them. So uh, the the orange galoshes you were talking about. Would it be possible to get those embossed with the RSS feed logo? That would be cool. Oh, that'd be nice. Spoken as a geek. <laughs> Wait, I'm I sorry pay, that came out of my mouth. For that. I have a pair of Firefox Crocs. <laughs> but I've never seen you oh, in them. Oh, no, you don't. He lies. I don't wear them in public. They're strictly bedroom attire. That's all I wear. I've just met your wife. I don't think she would sleep with you if you were wearing those. Yeah, we should yeah, point no, out I would not. our studio audience is, is out on date night, and they chose to spend date night here with us of which my comment was you should divorce him um, <laughs> no see we have no lives yeah our lives is our children yeah that's, that's, yeah yeah i'm not sure why that would be so so uh, do, you, do you really wear those crocs that i mean what's the percentage of time you wear those crocs josh are they your main you know, shoes they are my main shoes i i wear them every day that's not sunday wow wow so do you own more than one pair of orange Crocs? I do. Okay. Apparently Sunday Crocs. I, I had a probably. previous pair that, that wore out. They got a little shabby. The little strap part broke off. Mm-hmm. And uh, I had to buy a replacement pair. So let me ask, do you wear it with the strap over the top of the Croc or the strap behind your heel? I, I wear it over the top out mm-hmm. of sheer laziness. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I also realize that the, uh, you know, I wear the Crocs for the RSS reason and also to pretty much just announce to people that I, I have no fashion sense and just get that out in the open. So I, I figure, you know, the worse I can make them look, the more that kind of communicates that that critical message. You know, I could see you in a nice black jacket, a black kind of T-shirt, maybe some shades, you know, just just bringing on the... Are you uh, trying to blues brother him? Yeah, yeah, they're bringing on the, the, the geek uh, darkness, right? Something I think he, like wants to dress, he wants to dress you up like a blues brother. Not that blues brothers. Normal. Yeah, yeah, like me. <laughs> Doctor Normal. Everyone should dress like me. No, don't take my advice. No, we don't need clones of Doctor Normal running around. That would be just downright disturbing. 
So what are you doing over there at Tiny Screenfuls? Are you uh, are you uh, posting some uh, more videos? Uh, I remember, I recall uh, way back when, about a year ago, you had a nice uh, unveiling of a uh, of a small PC, and um, and I really enjoyed the video. And I, I noted some I noted some Twitter comments as well as you know, you, and I can relate to this as a podcaster you kind of had some family interruptions during the uh, <laughs> unboxing you know a few starts and stops any more of those That's, videos we can look forward to <laughs> you, you can always look forward to that kind of thing uh tiny screenfuls is just my blog it really doesn't have a you know a, a focused mission or a destiny it's where i put geeky things uh photos video unboxings i get new toys and i shoot unboxings i actually um a couple of years ago before the unboxing phenomenon was really mainstream, um, noticed that it was something that, that geeks tended to do, especially with Apple products. They would take pictures of this you know, ceremony of the new gadget smell, and they would kind of live vicariously. So I actually bought Unboxing.com, and I started a, a site there where I posted my own unboxing pictures and videos and linked to others from around the web. And um, it got really, really popular really fast to the point where I felt bad that I couldn't update it because it was just a little side project. So uh, I ended up selling it to uh, to Andrew Edwards up at Gear Live, and he's taken it over and I think done it proud. But I, I'm proud to have played a role in uh, birthing the unboxing phenomenon into the mainstream. So that's amazing because I, I learn something new every week. I didn't realize that the unboxing phenomenon was a phenomenon, and now I want some new gadgets so that I can unbox them on video. Yes, unboxing of new shoes would also be uh, would be appropriate. I think unboxing of new shoes that's fine. Please, really, do I not like encourage shoes. Her. I, I like <laughs> I like gadgets way more than I like shoes, though, because shoes it's kind of weird to be sniffing a shoe, but I definitely get the new computer smell. Yes, the new electronic smell is a good one. Yeah, um, I'm trying to think of the last gadget I unboxed formally. I believe it was my my Kindle that I did on video. Which was oh, up on my side. good point. So, how how are you loving that Kindle? I love my Kindle to death. Um, I we were just uh, I had date night with my wife Rachel. We went to Powell's uh, out here in Beaverton, and we're sitting around reading books. And there's uh, a book that's been on my wish list for a while: the twenty six hundred, uh, the best of twenty six hundred, the Hacker Magazine. Right. And it's about three and a half inches thick and huge and bulky, and you know, cost forty dollars to buy the Dead Tree version. And I'm sitting there just wishing they would hurry up and do a Kindle version because I would love to read it, but I don't want to drag that big, heavy, dead tree around. Same thing with uh, with Neil Stevenson's Anathem, which he writes just huge, huge books that are 1,100 pages long. I read that on my Kindle, and, and it was terrific. It's, it's in my pocket right now along with about 150 other books. And it has built-in wireless, so you just do this all wirelessly uh, off a cellular network, correct? Yeah, it has a built-in cellular radio. It actually uses Sprint's EVDO network. So if you have a Sprint cell phone, it uses their network. Uh, but it, there's no monthly fee or anything. It's just built into the, the Kindle purchase price. And that's how you get books from the Amazon store. It also has a web browser built in. So you can look up things on Wikipedia or anywhere else. Um, you know, it's a full-blown web browser. That, that You can't do you know video and some of the fancy stuff. But um, for looking stuff up or or getting some reference information it's really good um it also plays mp3s people don't know this I it has an sd that. card slot it plays mp3s and it plays audible audiobooks it has an purchase. sd card slot yes it does which a iphone does not no that's my one kind of with the iphone is that i i miss having it's also my one kind of tiff with my macbook is that i don't have an sd card slot on my macbook either is it a macbook or a macbook pro it's a macbook do the pros yeah, have an SD slot? They they don't actually, but I have a, a MacBook Pro, which I'm actually sitting in front of right now. And one of the best purchases I ever made for it was a, an Express Card card reader for SD and memory stick. Mm -hmm. So that little Express Card slot on the side, which I never use for anything, now has a, a card reader that lives in there. So it effectively turns itself into an SD slot. I'm trying. Chris or work has my laptop. I'm trying, <laughs> do I have a place to put something like that? No, Chris. You do not. Curses. They, they do have external USB. I, I have a great card reader. It reads like four or five different kinds of cards. It's just a little bulky. 
Yes, yes. You, you can get little card readers for SD that are about the size of a, like a USB thumb drive. Mm-hmm. Um, they actually can encase an SD card and actually be a USB thumb drive. That's a nice, a nice travel option to keep in your bag if you ever need to pull something off a card. Are you listening to the Christmas suggestions you're getting, Dr. Normal? <laughs> I'm sorry, what? You need, you need a new laptop now? What? No, 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 no. I need a little thumb drive USB reader. Oh, yeah. The ones we had crapped out. Oh, but I want After one that, about a year. How about I have one that doesn't crap out? Yeah, we just need to get some more. They're like five or six bucks. They're, they're no big deal. Okay. Use them all the time. Put it on my Christmas list. Okay. With Stocking some, stuffer. With some new Doc Martens. <laughs> oh, good times. Oh, so Josh, not familiar with After Hours. This is the drink music. This is the portion of After Hours where we tell the studio, or not the studio audience, but the uh, the live Late night at night last audience. night, Cammy. <laughs> Cammy got three hours of sleep last night. I was on a high from talking. Uh, hello. Talk, 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 up on stage five minutes, and then you have an adrenaline rush for like 24 hours. That's understandable. Yeah, I wow. did. So what are you drinking tonight? That's a fun feeling, huh? <laughs> um, I'm, I'm drinking a margarita on the rocks. Really? You, you often don't do that. No, I often rock. don't do Usually that. Usually splendid. I'm very lazy. I'm having the traditional Spanish cava, which mm-hmm. is sparkling wine, which is Spanish champagne. <coughs> Zozo Bear was drinking a cherry Coke and tequila. She could say that. She's got a mic. Oh, she has a mic. What are a you what? drinking, Zozo Bear? <laughs> what is it? Tequila and cherry Coke. It tequila was pretty good. Tequila and cherry Coke. You wouldn't think it works, but it's it, so it works fairly well. And Chris? Straight vodka. Yes. No. Okay, sure. <laughs> <laughs> He's drinking a pig cool glass of refreshing water because That's he's good. done drinking the Lagavulin. There you go. Lagavulin. The, I can say the, that now. <laughs> um, Ooh, so Ooh. Josh, yes. what, is, what is your beverage? You know, I actually have a, a glass of water right here with me. Sparkling or still? Straight out of our filter. Nice. What do Any you more? like to, what's your favorite drink? I mean, what's your favorite non-alcoholic, whatever, what's your favorite beverage? My uh, my beverage of choice is Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew. Mm. Yes, I am a, a diehard Mountain Dew addict. So you're not you haven't graduated to like the rock star or something like that, right? No, I could I can never get over the taste. Mountain Dew is just is just mellow enough that it's not uh, offensive or, or shocking when you drink it. All the other drinks like that I've tried are just a little too much to deal with taste wise. But uh, Mountain Dew is is you know mellow enough to deliver the sugar and the caffeine without being a distraction. So. It's the original uh, power drink, right? The original. The original geek programming That's fluid. Right. I myself am a diehard Cherry Coke fan. Yeah. Sad but true. That's true. So uh, what else uh, we're working on tonight? This, this. I think everyone's just so exhausted. For, are you? I imagine you're a bit exhausted after Ignite as well. I, I am a little bit tired. It's been a, a crazy couple of weeks run up. Um, several things, both Ignite related and work related and family related kind of conspired to make the last two or three weeks just really, really insane. So, uh, tonight is the, the end of it. Tomorrow marks the, for all, for, for all I care, the end of the year, last thing I have to do for a little while. That's nice. Tomorrow I wanted to just sit around. I, I, I have no alarm clock going off tomorrow. That's big excitement for me. (laughs) That's right. That's a big day. So I have, to, I have to ask you a question about your presentation. I missed the first part of your presentation because I was outside talking to Joe Smith. To the media. That's right. You're a big media appearance. I was being a little media <laughs> darling. And, uh, so anyway, I came back in and I missed the first part of it. But what... I'm getting funny hand signals from Dr. Normal. There you go. Oh, <clears throat> apparently I have too much leg going on. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so... When you're presenting, we still don't have this hand signals down here on the show. <laughs> when you're presenting, after almost a year, <laughs> it's the wild waving. When you're presenting the what ignite is about talk, it's very different than doing just any other talk because it's been done. Now this was the fourth time in Portland that it's been done. What does that entail? What is what goes into the setting up the what ignites about talk? It's it's partially different, and and honestly, I I underestimated how much work it would take to do it up to the standards that have been set by Mm -hmm. people who've done it before. Uh, Raven has done it before. Scott Kavitan, uh, Rennie Gleason did it at the first one. And they've all been, they've all been different. The thing is, it's kind of the place, 
after we learned that people don't like, you know, kind of that just the announcements and this is where the bathrooms is kind of thing, they like to just jump in and get the thing going. Um, that's where we do things like, you know, hey, the bathrooms are downstairs and up in the balconies. You know, miners have to be out by nine, all the kind of housekeeping stuff. Mm-hmm. And then there's a little bit about how the Ignite format works for anyone who doesn't know or is there for the first time. The whole 20 slides for 15 seconds, five minutes per person. Once the train leaves the station, they all just go. Um, so that's part of it. But then that really, I mean, you can't fill up 20 slides with that and not be terribly boring. Yeah. So it's a lot of room for uh, for improvisation and actually doing something creative. It's kind of really the only, you know, s- special spot, reserved spot for a presentation. And what I chose to do with mine was actually give a little bit of the history of Ignite Portland, um, how it got started up in Seattle with Gnome Dex, and Rick C played an integral role with that. He saw me tweet about, you know, hey, this would be really cool. Let's go do this in Portland. He immediately grabbed the domain name, IgnitePortland.com, and said, hey, I've got this. You know, let's do it and make it happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and then we, it, we got involved with, with Don and Raven, who had been doing bar camp and had lots of experience with events and things, which is a good thing because I don't. And it all just snowballed from there. So it, I kind of chose to give a little bit of the history of Ignite, where it's been, highlight how it's grown, um, how it's become just this huge snowball that – <laughs> eats up 550 tickets in three and a half hours and fills up the Baghdad every time and gets on the TV news and uh, yeah, just kind of highlight the the community and what they've done to, to build it and make it happen. We have a question from the audience. So uh, can can we expect you to do a croc spotting presentation since you registered <laughs> crocspotting.com? I, I threw that out in the chat room um, wondering if anyone would pick up on it. I, I glutton for punishment, I guess. So if you actually go to crockspotting.com, you'll see what it is. It's uh, There was a Twitter conversation with, with a few people around uh, a trip to Shanghai, China, I, I took in April for work, and how I would, you know, take pictures of my crocs, like crocs around the world, and, <coughs> and you know, croc spotting. And, and so we thought, hey, this would be a pretty good idea for our website. So um, a friend of mine registered the domain name, and I set up a little soup.io, soup.io site, a Tumblr site, basically, and it's all automatically generated. If you put something up on Flickr and tag it croc spotting, it will show up on that site. So that's uh, crocs around the world if you just can't get enough of them. Because we want more crocs. Is this... Uh, <laughs> Yay. Yay, crocs. How long has that site been up? That site's been up for mm, less than a year, but more than I, six months. Yeah, I, th- I think I saw Hockley get, get on that or something, you know. And so you post pictures and that sort of thing, yeah, right? Ba- Basically, it's so it's a it's a site powered by Soup.io, which uh-huh. is like Tumblr. You can uh, have yeah, it automatically yeah. import feeds. Is it just and like an feed RSS is, feed? It's, the feed the feed that it's importing <coughs> like is a Tumblr from blog. Yeah, exactly. So it's pulling from Flickr anything that's tagged croc spotting. Ah, so people have yet to uh, take advantage of that yeah. and <laughs> have to put up something they shouldn't. <laughs> uh, I expect that to change shortly, but uh, uh, Chris it's, it's O'Rourke fun. is typing madly right now. I can imagine. Uh, if anybody, the next thing typed into the uh, the chat room, I'm actually going to search that picture and then put it on my Flickr account under the term "croc spotting." There we go. And actually, oh, actually, we 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 I think we have uh, someone's um, one of our f- fans of the show is actually submitting a. An ignite presentation as we speak called "How Do Bathrooms Work?" So that I'm excited about that Who's one. Who's submitting that? Three guesses. <laughs> no, I don't want to guess. Yeah, you're not in the chat room, so this this is the one time where you're disadvantaged. The Who's chat room. submitting the help? Here's here's the thing. Really we know he's bluffing. Call his bluff. <laughs> exactly. It, it's he's the be, most creepy be person in denying ignite. it in the chat room. <laughs> the most creepy person. Me? <laughs> I, I no no no. I like to call him the Silicon Florist. Oh, oh, so. my creepy, creepy lurker <laughs> friend who just stood in the back staring at people like a weird, creepy guy. <laughs> nice. He what? Every time I would come in or out of the door, there would be Why Rick standing in the back. Why do we get in the, Okay. Poor Rick. He's yeah, a glutton Rick. for yeah. punishment. If he didn't want to hear us talk about him, he'd stop listening. It, well, nice. Yeah, let's, <laughs> let's just throw him away. You know, yeah, we don't. Yeah, that's great. You know, lose our audience members quickly. Let's see who else we can insult in the in the chat room right now. Well, tell me who's there, and I'll say something mean about no, them. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, good times. 
So what's uh, what's on your mind as far as technology goes right now? I mean, just kind of like uh, off the top of your head. I mean, is there something that you're really jazzed about right now, or is it uh, is technology gotten really boring now? You know, I I don't think technology ever can get boring for me. It, as he asks the leading question, <laughs> <laughs> I've I, I've been a geek since I was about four years old. When my grandfather brought home a Pong machine and then got me an Atari 1200XL computer and a book on how to program in BASIC, and that was just the end right there. Um, What I'm excited right now, these these netbook computers, these EPCs like you've got there on the table, and um, during the break after or before after hours, we were were, uh, geeking out all over in the chat room, and we drove Rick away for a little while, but uh, he came back, thankfully. Yeah, super geeking or singing will do that. (laughs) They're 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 really hot right now. I mean, I so so I work for Intel um, Intel Software Network, and we kind of um, have you know we build a community for software developers who do stuff for these kind of things. And so I kind of keep track and I write about them a little bit, you know, for my real professional job. And uh, they're just they're hot for some reason. People love them. They're they're small. They're relatively inexpensive, and they're they're very very personal in a way that most people don't treat their laptop. I mean, some people cover their laptop in stickers, and it becomes kind of a very personal extension of who they are. Um, mine definitely falls in that category. But uh, these these little ones are are something that nobody saw coming, I don't think. And uh, they're they're everywhere now. I mean, there's tons of different versions. They're all copies of each other, and the people are fighting for for market share and all that boring stuff. You you push the business parts of my brain, and I'm starting to sound like an Intel dork. So I'll shut up. You know, I was really surprised when, when the tablets started kind of, they weren't becoming popular, the tablets were coming out and people were starting to get them and it was the hot new thing. And I really expected tablets to take off and I thought that was going to be awesome. And I thought, oh, everyone will have a tablet. I'll have a tablet. It'll be fantastic. And I think that the EPCs and the little mini computers kind of took over where that would have come in because you can take a, an EPC and throw it in your purse if you exactly if you have a mommy yeah. purse. Yeah. The, or if you have cargo pants. Yeah, if your cargo pants have a big enough pocket, I'm sure you could fit them in there. Yep. In fact, that uh, that little EPC you've got on the table there, mm-hmm. I've, I've tested that. It, it fits in my cargo pants pockets. Is that a very practical way to carry it? Um, honestly, no, because you need an <laughs> industrial strength belt to keep your pants up. <laughs> Don't ask me how I know that. Um, I'm, I'm just going to take it on faith. And in and, and, and practicality... <laughs> Since my, my Kindle is in my left cargo pants pocket, my Moleskine notebook is in my right, and so there's you know there's no room for it anyway. So I, I have actually a little Timbuktu Metro messenger bag, which mm-hmm. is a little very teeny tiny, uh, very man purse kind mm-hmm. of a bag that that I carry my netbook around in my EPC. So, so you actually write on paper occasionally? I I do actually. It's it's a new thing for me. I, I'm experimenting with it, and uh, I, I think I like it. Every time I go to Powell's, I have to stop and look at the, the Moleskinas and think, oh, I could get that one, and I could write in that one. And I, I have many blank Moleskinas. Even the one that I've been carrying around for months is maybe only 15% full. So I don't write much, but when a big idea strikes me, I like to, to write it down there. I, I love them, and partly because I always think back to the – I'm such a nerd um, – the Indiana Jones with uh, with Sean Connery where he gets his father's notebook – and it's got the little uh, strap to keep it shut. And so every time I open my notebook with the little strap, I think back to the Holy Grail diary. And you think they called the dog Indy. <laughs> oh, exactly. my God. Good times. Good times. At least it wasn't a Doctor Who reference. Thank God Hey, that. you brought it up. Yeah. Don't make me talk about Doctor Who. You know I can. Do I need to... Uh utter the Sarah Palin reference to Indiana Jones from last week to, to get us away from this topic. No, 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 no. No, no dad. <laughs> My wife is actually requesting that you do. She's uh, <laughs> She has strong opinions about Sarah Palin. <laughs> last week I said okay, that... Okay, I'm uh, just going to... I'm too delicate to hear this. Go ahead. Uh-huh. I, I said that uh, Dr. Normal would rather felch Sarah Palin oh, than ever geez. watch Indiana Jones 4. Yeah, uh-huh. I did it again. Woo! It is after hours, isn't it? <clears throat> yes. <clears throat> Ah, good time. Yeah, thank, wow, thanks yeah, for that. Exactly, exactly. Welcome yeah. to After now, Hours. Thank you very much. Now, now I'm going to have to explain to my wife what that means. Yeah, no. no it's yeah. Okay. Just have her look it up. It's, it's yeah. okay. no. I had to explain to Dr. Norman. You know what? what it's, that it's, it's all bunnies yeah. and kittens. It really I, I is. It's have, just yes. bunnies and kittens. Have Google. You know, no. it's, it's oh, just, yeah, that's not the kind of thing you want to Google. You never no. know what's going to go. Oh, you, wait, uh-uh, no. 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 
No. Yeah. 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 It, it's yeah. in the Wikipedia. Yeah. Yeah. Just, oh, just that's, Wikipedia. That's safer. But yeah, you, you <laughs> just, you just man up and man up and tell her, like I had to do with Doctor no, Normal. No, let's not. Um, like I said, bunnies. I'm, I'm and, not going to tell them what it means. It's Everyone little else. cats. It's little cats. I'm sure there's something you, you can Google on little cats, but. Um, <laughs> I unicorn. totally you need a unicorn chaser. Well, maybe not though. Um, but um, anyway, um, oh lord, I totally lost my train of thought. Um, you oh, had I, one? Yeah, I was actually going to say we had um, Steve Woodward uh, from the Oregonian on our show uh, several weeks back, and he talked about being a, a kind of on the tech <coughs> beat, and he talked about interviewing you and you coming into the Oregonian and. Essentially, un- <laughs> essentially taking everything out of your your cargo pants, your <laughs> your your you know um, your EPC and your iPhone and your everything and laying it out on the table and and um, yep. It reminded me of one of those scenes in a movie where you've got someone in there and they just keep pulling weapons out of their pants and their boots and they don't know where things are tucked away. It was that kind of thing. The way he described it is it just kept coming and coming and. He didn't that's, know where it came from. That's not inaccurate. That's that's pretty much how it was. It was a. I, I was actually down there talking to them about podcasting, and so I brought in my. I, I brought in. I, <laughs> I had my little portable recorder with me and uh, my standard loadout of. Um, I think I had my my Nintendo DS and my PSP, and uh, it, I was carrying a Windows Mobile phone. This was 2005. It's a while ago. So, yeah, I, I kept pulling these out, and he said, "You know, hey, we're doing these." personality profile on the geek of geeks you know the you know who is the biggest gadget geek and would you be interested in that and who do it, you think it, is the geek of geeks who do i think is the geek the of portland geeks? Geek aside of from geeks. yourself no well portland or or just outside of, of portland we can I'm do curious who, who you like look to for for guidance not in footwear but you know no, the, you do. <laughs> i look to you for guidance in footwear oh now. yes thank you <laughs> We should really talk um, about those Docker slip-ons. Really, he says they're very comfortable, but not orange. Go ahead. I, sorry. <laughs> you know, my wife is nodding in agreement about the shoe intervention. Which I think Love if it. I didn't know better, I think she put you up to it. But I didn't um, have that much so of a chance to talk to her last night. Just hello, nice to meet you. Oh, trust you. me, I think this has been in the works for six months on on our end. So <laughs> I have been plotting. Somehow I don't think she's the only one worried about it. <laughs> okay, so who so do I look to for geekery? Mm-hmm. Um, Raven Zachary. Mm. One of the uh, the the Legion of Tech and Ignite fellows, um, he's he's Mr. iPhone now, and he, I mean, he is very very well connected. I mean, every time I go to show him something that I think is cool with the iPhone or some kind of you know web technology or the, you know the kind of stuff that I like, he he's already seen it, and he's always he's always really gracious about it. He never says, "Oh yeah, that was you know cool three days ago when I found it," but um, he's he's like, "Yeah," and have you seen this and everything? He's He's super smart. Um, I, there's lots of people. I, I learn from everyone I talk to. I, there's people who know, you know, I, I like photography. I'm definitely an amateur, but, you know, Aaron's always got something to say about what, what new camera or lens is coming out or or stuff like that. So there's, I mean, yeah, I, I, I'm kind of on the spot and I can't think of, of people I, I look up to, but uh, there are many of them for sure. Dr. Norm will stop laughing at the chat room and become... I was just going to uh, chat that for the first time uh, in, in the history of this podcast for almost a year, I have the giggles. Yeah. Because I actually <laughs> censored myself um, when I was asking Josh a, a question that I realized would come out very odd. <laughs> <laughs> and it was it, the reference to unloading his pants at the Oregonian. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I just uh, I realized it was going to come out wrong and I tried to adjust it. So it's podcast first, actually, editing, because podcasting isn't about editing yourself. It's about letting it all hang out and making it happen. Yeah. That's so, why we love the medium. I'm curious if there's any questions from the chat room this evening. Any additional questions from the chat room? I, I just I just have to point out one thing real quick. Rick mm-hmm. says I've never learned anything by talking to him, and he knows that's not true. I've, I've learned lots about how to be a, a gentleman and a, just a real class act from talking to Rick, so... Yeah, never let sure. it set you in. bet. So, you bet. Well, and you know, and say he, all the bad things you want to about yourself, Mister. But yeah, he's got your number, Rick. Okay. So, <laughs> what's going on in the chat room? That's so funny over there, people. Uh, it's pretty much just me. It's pretty oh. much just me losing it. So, um, so so Raven. Um, 
anything else any other trends so we've got the the so which uh, okay this this is the question everyone wants to know you're stuck on a desert island mm-hmm. you have one piece of tech what is it i i have to ask some qualifying questions no no ask is, them is there, because there... I, I already thought of the qualify i thought of like three already so go ahead and ask is there power yes sure yeah okay. just mysteriously on this there is also single... wi-fi yeah there's Wi-Fi and internet connectivity. Mm-hmm. Yes, and I have one piece of one piece. But of somehow you're stranded on this island. No matter Why? what you we do, d- no one will come get you. Yeah. it might be the Crocs. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, that assuming power and Wi-Fi, that I, I can't narrow it down. Actually, um, I, I'd say my my iPhone or my MacBook Pro. But which one? And that's that's very boring. Um, iPhone because it can do things my computer. Wow, can. that surprises mm. me, Josh. That actually really surprises me. I would, if I had guessed, I would say you would say your Mac because of the, well, for, for one reason, you're not going to get any flash. Oh, yes. Who cares? Is. Really? I, I like That's, my, I, I, I look care. at that as a positive thing. Every time I go up on Safari on my iPhone, you know why I, I find want... a site and it's like, I want to play this flash. It makes me crazy. I would have my MacBook because if I were stuck on a desert island, I would need to blog about it. And my deteriorating mental state, and I would want my MacBook for easier typing, because mm-hmm. the iPhone, while you can type a tweet, yeah, that's very true. Yeah, <laughs> get me off this island, please. Someone save me. Yeah, and then quit. Yeah, that would be better for writing. I, I just the, so the whole flash thing on the iPhone. A, a lot of people bring that up as an argument, and um, there's there's a, a friend of ours here in Portland who shall remain nameless is a very outspoken Nokia fan and likes to give me a hard time about my iPhone all the time. Um, and he always says, oh, yeah, the Nokia can play Flash. And, and I said, yeah, but do you really want to? Because Flash is used for so many annoying things on the Internet, like just the annoying ads. And, yeah, there's little Flash games and things that you can play. But I, I honestly don't miss it at all on the iPhone, and I, I kind of hope that they don't add it. But on, my, but on my PC where I'm running Firefox, I've got all the blockers and everything, and I never have a problem with Flash. So I'm always... You know, it, it's a little more annoying. You have to click through, but I don't find it annoying that you know I go to a new site and I have to kind of click through on the flash and, and make sure so that that's what I want it, to do. You would have it so that you could enable the flash yourself. Sure. Yeah, just like Firefox yeah, and, and, and PC. And the annoyance factor, I, I think, is not really that big of a deal. But uh, so, so what do you? What would you miss if you didn't have flash? I mean, what are the things you use that require flash? I. I you know what I find all the time that I'm going up to sites that have like some streaming video or streaming audio or something that I want to check out that I can't with flat and I get that annoying what is it a brick or whatever they put there it's a lego this, brick it a, looks like a, is lego. It a lego brick and I really it really annoys me I mean it's really I I feel like I want that full functionality you know what yeah I I can see that I can understand that I I get it very different when I see it I get ticked off at the site for not making it iPhone friendly, um, including sometimes the Strange Love Live site, uh, because the way we post the audio. So I always try to put a link in there so that you can quick well, so it as well. I, I think it's just so pervasive on the net, and so many people embed do you media. Mean, do you mean prevalent? Pervasive. I like that. It's more techy. <laughs> okay. Um, you go with your. No, I, I know what you mean, but yeah. but I I think Kemi has a point with sites that. I mean, if you put an MP3 up on your site, the, the and you click on it on the iPhone, it'll Correct. start streaming. Correct. Same thing with it with a QuickTime video, and there are sites that are, are starting to take advantage of that, like Apple's own uh, trailer site for for the, you know the QuickTime files there. Oh, sure, so, sure. But, but, but you know, but that's not, but that's not, you know, it 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 is a gap. Uh, you know, uh, the, the, uh, the big thing that everyone always says is, oh, but YouTube. Well, there's a YouTube app on the phone, and it actually streams the higher quality H.264 version, which looks better. So. Yeah, I enjoy watching YouTube on my iPhone. So do my children. They love it to death. Uh, that's what I, I use when when I'm out with my daughter and she's uh, not being well entertained. I I let her watch YouTube or I let her play the popping bubbles game. Uh, my kids love that one too. And the koi pond. Have you tried the koi pond? I have not. I'm gonna have to check out the koi pond. Koi pond is is a kid magnet. And and uh, lately the the Ocarina app, the little flute app that you can play, which, which is I, I saw amazing. You tweeting anyway. you about the Ocarina. 
Okay, I'm going to check those out. Chris O'Rourke has something to say. Uh, I can't actually get my 23-month-old to sleep without playing uh, drum corps videos from YouTube. Actually, no way. Yeah, our, our seven-month-old is getting to that point as oh well. They God. will not go to sleep unless they watch. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the key here is that we blew all of our after hours on nonsense about Doctor Who, and we didn't talk about drum corps <laughs> during the, like for the last five minutes of the show, um, because Chris and I are sort of drummers. Well, I am sort of. They're drum. Chris nerds. is drum corps guy, but anyway, um, uh, and which I've totally lost my train of thought because I was going to ask Josh something else. Uh, it, it, oh yeah, so here's the thing: you have the YouTube app on the iPhone. Not all YouTube videos are playable on the iPhone. Most are. Um, but it's like, um, you know, we're doing this on Ustream right now. We're doing live streaming. That uses Flash. We can't, yeah. you can't stream to the iPhone there. I mean, it's, it's those kinds of limitations. And I know that it's going to get there. I mean, I know it's close. But it's those kind of little annoying limitations that, 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 to me, it's like it's just really, almost what's the there. the practicality of watching this show on your iPhone? What's the practicality live? of watching this show? I think okay, is well, the real exactly. question yeah. we're asking. Are you going to make the practicality argument? I mean, that's fair. Let's let's <laughs> skip the yeah. practicality. No, I, I know what you mean. <laughs> and Adobe has Adobe has been rumored to have said that you know, hey, we have Flash working on the iPhone, and it just can't. It's it's too much for the processor. It's too sure. much for the the battery. There's you know who who knows why they don't do the things they do. I mean. I when the iPhone very first came out, I was um, I was against getting one. I wasn't going to get one because it you didn't and me use both. 3G. You were like, mm. I, I was staunch. I mean, I blogged about why I wasn't going to get it and how I thought it was stupid because I had a 3G Windows Mobile phone on AT and T that was fast. You know, I had one megabit connections and it was great. And I wasn't going to downgrade back to the slow edge network. Um, and then <laughs> about a week before launch, I, my resistance wore down, and I actually went out to the Hillsborough AT and T store and camped out all day long so I could be the very first person in line, the first person in Hillsboro to get an iPhone. I made fun and of that, you, and well, not you specifically, but I made fun of that <laughs> phenomenon. Oh, go with it. Go with it. You made fun of him. It was the first Crocs one. and the being in line. I, I just TV, iPhone, man. <laughs> as, as much as I like um, gadgetry, I just really don't, I can't fathom standing in line and camping out and That's paying right. how much was it when it first came out? Six hundred. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was six hundred dollars. Yeah. I just can't fathom spending that money on yeah. something that's untested. The first time. And I- see, the, the the camping out thing, you know, the the being there. First of all, they they launched it at six p.m. So it, you know, I got there at nine in the morning and I was the first person. It wasn't a, that's a get up early thing. I, I did that for the iPhone three G. Uh, got up at four in the morning and went. Um, <laughs> but it was. It was it was a geek experience, you know. I, I tried to make it a fun experience, and mm-hmm. you know, set up my little camp chair, and you know, have my wife bring me lunch, and you know, twitted about it, and have my laptop, and and everything kind of made it an experience. So, yeah, the, it's not for everyone, but um, yeah, I, I I had a great time, and I now understand. I'm uh, now I've had the Kool Aid. Your wife mm-hmm. is a saint. She has an in, iPhone in now. In more too. ways than one. Does she have a three G or, or the old school? She actually has the original one, um, but the uh, she she's dropped it a couple of times, mm-hmm. and the volume button is a little bit sticky on mm-hmm. the side, mm-hmm. and it likes to just turn itself down all the time, and so that's the excuse I'm trying to use to to get her to upgrade, get her a nice white 3G 16 gig. But uh, she keeps saying, in fact, she just muttered right now, I don't need a new phone. Yeah, see, I really like my I've got the original iPhone, and I really like it also because. I, I don't really need the the three G. I you use don't it need on the extra charge. I don't. The 3G. Yeah, I don't need yeah, the extra charge. Don't. I use it on my Wi Fi for the, you know the majority of the time, and they charge you more, and the plan is different, and, right. and I don't like that. So, uh, Josh, um, how do you like your Google Android phone? You know, I haven't been able to put my hands on one yet, but I I, I do want to get one to play with. Um, no, you I, haven't I, ever I played with. Actually picked one up and played with it. I, I've never actually put my hands on one. No. Wow. Doesn't Brian have one? I think I think Brian Stearns. Yeah. Does next have time you see, do you know Brian Stearns? I do. Yeah. Yeah. Next time you see Brian, just say, "Hey, hand it over." Yeah, I, I actually know a couple of people who who got them. I just haven't. Uh, the stars have not aligned for me to to put my hands on and play with it yet. Do you think uh, Google Android will be a player in mobile? Um. Will they be a player? Yeah. Are they going to? Displace the iPhone? No. 
um, there was some sales data that came out when the iPhone first came out. All the com- the, the competition, Microsoft, and everyone said, you know, they'll you know they'll get a niche market and people will use it and they'll like it, but it'll never become really popular and mainstream. And then then it started. You know, they they said uh, Steve Ballmer was famously quoted, and this has been thrown in his face this week. Um, saying, you know, they they may get one or two percent market share, but they'll never get the thirty or forty percent that Windows Mobile has. And you know, flash forward now, what a year and a half, and they've bypassed Windows Mobile, they've bypassed BlackBerry, and actually, just this week, the the data came out that the the number one selling phone for the last several years, consumer cell phone in the U.S., has been the Razer, the Motorola Razer, that they will actually give you free or pay you to take when you sign a contract. The iPhone is now outselling the Razer. It is the number one selling cell phone in the U.S. I used to have a Razer. They were cool like the first month or two when they started falling apart. Exactly. <laughs> well, you, yeah. Yeah, you, you broke yours. but No, you broke yours first. No, yeah, mine just started falling apart. So. No, you were playing soccer in the uh, backyard with Oh, the no, boys. that wasn't a Razer. That was the other one. Oh, was that it? was what replaced the razor. Yeah, the razors we did for Christmas We've one year. We've been through some cell phones. We've been through. The, the I think the iPhone has been the sturdiest one and has lasted me. I've had yeah. it for almost a year now. But I've been a. I went to the iPhone from the Palm platform. Yeah. Being a long time Palm user, and just boy, you know, still. <laughs> st- yes, yes. Chris O'Rourke is laughing right now. Thank you, Chris. It's a valid tech statement that I've been a long time Palm user. It gets worse every time you say it. Yeah, but hey, Chris, what about the technology? Um, um, and it was it was a tough tough growing pains actually. <laughs> I really can't get a word in edgewise here in, in uh, after hours. I've just uh, pretty much now, Josh. Did, did we tell you this was the last podcast? This was the night podcasting dies uh, across the internet. Actually, this is this is it. I mean, I'm, there probably I'm, will I'm, be no podcast. This after is the this. night that podcasting dies. Take three. Yeah, exactly. I'm starting to see that. It, it started when we got Kavitan to wear makeup for Halloween. So. Good times. Nice. Yeah. He just said it was for Halloween. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <clears throat> so it looks like there's a, there's a question in the chat room, but uh, oh, somebody cool. asked if they could ask a question, but we don't know what the question yeah. is. What, well, yes, the, you may ask so, a question. So go ahead, please. Give us yes, a question. Yes, please do. And what now we this? wait because there's a delay. Yeah, do, do, who had the question? Yeah. Do, do, do. I took. Well, I just I take, wanted to kind of encourage them to get it out there. Yeah, I can, take my yeah. eyes off the chat room for one minute and. Chris O'Rourke, be the chat room man. I'm, yes, I'm yes, we've got yeah. Chris wrangling the chat room tonight for us. Yes, I'm the masculine verso. By the way, mm, slash media. Did shit. I mention he's doing this on date night? Yeah. So, oh yeah. Um, How much shit are we going to get about that? I, I think a lot, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um. Dr. Normal's idea of date night and my idea, see, I like to go out and have a nice dinner and then maybe go see a movie, whereas he wants to go and, and have dinner and then, you know, go on a little walk along the river and hold hands and, and the sunset and, and, everything. and smoochie and watch the sunset. Yeah. He's, yeah. Uh, Josh is being asked a question about uh, the Blackberry Storm, which apparently oh, is yeah. Blackberry Storm, Josh. And so, so the Blackberry Storm is the one. It's a new with one, the, right? Yeah. The the clicky touch screen, like when the soft keyboard oh. comes up on the screen, it's the first BlackBerry without a physical keyboard. Hey, but BlackBerry, this, welcome to the 21st century, right? <laughs> Who was I talking <laughs> but to? But the about screen that actually thing? clicks. It's supposed to feel like a key. Oh, I, yeah. I think it's a cool idea, and I think Blackberries are great devices. I mean, they can do an awful <laughs> lot. Um, but uh, I, I I haven't played with the BlackBerry Storm yet. I haven't touched it yet. Um, and I think that this is one where, you know, I say that a lot, like meaning I haven't used it or anything, but that's one I think where you really need to put your hands on it and see what that clicking feels like. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. The and, only- and I'm being asked to guess, to guess who it was who asked this question. And I, I can think of a couple people who it might be. So re- reveal yourself, anonymous Ustream commenter. I, wow. I don't know. Thank I, I don't you, Ustreamer, with a number behind you. I talked to somebody about that black that particular BlackBerry last night, and the only thing I've ever seen about it was I was watching Hulu, and and they had a which you would not be able to watch on your iPhone streaming. That's by the way. true. You cannot watch Hulu another, on your iPhone. Uh, but it's I, I prefer to you know kick back and watch Hulu on my laptop. So when you're on that island, you you would. Have I would your take laptop. my MacBook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Clearly, if I had you know internet connectivity. 
There was another question asked, and that was, uh, could you actually say palm casting as opposed to podcasting, doctor? Please. Well, yeah, I mean, so, so the thing is, is that 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 um, uh, you know, to to give the iPhone credit, there actually is a YouTube app, and you can actually stream video, and and certainly the Palm. The thing that makes me sad is is that platform was, I think, the original mobile platform. I mean, the one that really took off, and I had the little green one from U.S. Robotics, and. And it was yeah, really handy, cool. and you could sync it with Outlook, and you could do all okay. these things, and um, you could put a pager in it. You could do all these cool things. And and the thing is, is it just, um, you know, for business reasons, the, the platform sort of, you know, kind of died off the map. And, and I think we should give you know, Palm credit where credit's due, though. We actually use uh, one of your old yeah, let's Palms get, in the give studio. Yeah, Palm's credit with. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I've actually got my old tungsten... Um, with the SD card where I'm loading up like little pre-roll music just on the board here to to yeah Palm was play. Palm was very accomplished they uh, they did a lot of cool stuff they they made some decisions and you know who am I to judge I'm not a CEO but they they right. split off the operating system and the hardware side and the operating system got bit, bought by some Chinese company who wanted to make it all Linux based and mm-hmm. I actually remember a blip in the news about two weeks ago that the new version of the Palm OS came out and it looked like every other simple cell phone operating system you've ever seen and uh, nobody really cared, which is too bad. Yeah. It's kind of uh, devolved into that, but there were some really cool Palm devices. I My, my very first PDA was a Windows Mobile uh, Windows CE 2.1 grayscale device. So how and do then you, I got, right. So how do, it, was it Philips or one of those? or It was actually the EverX. Yeah, yeah. The EverX A10. It had a compact flash slot and 8 megs of RAM, 8 megs of storage. That, mm-hmm. was, that was big time, actually. So, I mean, you can answer this or, or not, but, I mean, how do you feel about the Windows Mobile platform? Um, I actually like Windows Mobile a lot. I was a big fan of it for a long time. Um, I, I've used everything. I went from I went from Windows CE to... Palm to my first smartphone was a, a sidekick. I had one of those, a couple of those actually, the monochrome and the color one. Um, had a BlackBerry for a while. Um, have had various Windows mobile phones, both the smartphone and the uh, the touch, you know, the, the touch screen interface. Um, they're terrific. They're capable devices. It's a relatively open platform. You can install lots of apps from different places. But but honestly, there's so many things, and I, I, I hate to, I can't th- ever think of a way to say this without sounding like a fanboy, but the iPhone really just eclipses them in so many ways so, that, that I just I, I couldn't go back to any of those other devices. I, I still pick them up and use them once in a while, and it's just, I, I think to myself, wow, things have really changed. Let me ask, before you got your iPhone, how often did you change phones? It was very, very, my wife is laughing in the background. <laughs> okay. It was very rare for me to go more than a year without uh, getting a new phone. I think that's the and average it, lifestyle. Yeah. The life cycle. Now, maybe with the maybe with the iPhone, it's different, but I yeah. Think but I'm talking average, like the last seven or eight years. Yeah. Or, <laughs> and it was never just a regular phone with me. It was, I mean, I'd I'd switch platforms. I'd go from you know Windows Mobile oh, to Blackberry okay. just because. I mean, these weren't like you know, hey, I trade my Razor in for something. I, I've never actually. Well, I have, but it's been you know ten years ago that I had a just a regular cell phone and a PDA, and then once they converged. Then it's all been smartphones and smart devices, and yeah, I think I'll, I'm I'm be the first in line for the internet implant in the back of my head as soon as they figure that out. Amber's cyborg anthropology that <laughs> that Nikon display screen headset thing that she has, yeah. I the forty foot uh, screen over your eye, yeah. If that could do internet browsing, it's just a media player. It can play video and audio because um, they actually sell them in Japan. Mm-hmm. If if it could do some kind of internet connectivity, um, I, I would totally buy one like of those. like Johnny Mnemonic. Yeah, I'll I'll do it. Yeah, that's actually um, that's what I want to see at, at Cyborg Camp. Are, are you coming? Are you coming to Cyborg Camp? Can you make I'm planning camp? on it. Yeah. Oh, awesome! Awesome. Um, hopefully, we have a lot of sci- uh, exciting things. A little little I, first plug for Cyborg Camp. I I have um, more on the phone issue. Well, I was just gonna say just because because I'm taking this tangent here. Um, heads up, running with it. Heads up displays. I mean the the whole you know they, we've had these things all over the place. In fact, I ta- was talking briefly to John Meta last night, and he said, you know, I built one of those little heads up displays. But I think you know one technology 
um, pushes another technology. So mobile computing, it seems to me, is not valuable without pervasive internet, right? So as mm. more you have connectivity, yeah. then you have people who want mobile devices to get that connectivity all the time. They're, they're sort of symbiotic. But with Twitter and this always connected kind of social networking and this messaging between folks, I'm ready for my Twitter glasses. Frankly, I want my heads yep. up. I I'm want amazed. My, I want to know what people are doing just walking down the street. And maybe I don't yep. respond, but I can get the feedback. I'm amazed that anything is made without connectivity, like DVD players, anything. I'm amazed that anything is made without being able to connect. Like when the Wii came out and I could, you know, surf the internet on my Wii, happy day. Yeah, yeah. I have to say people walking around with uh, internet-enabled headsets is maybe not that bad of an idea if it's women only that wear it, but I think guys wandering around looking at who knows what, <laughs> that's just not good. Oh, we're, we're already halfway there with phones with internet on them. So. You know, you really overestimate the libido or the underestimate the libido of he women. He was talking about me personally. Uh, actually, with, with women, you, you can't actually tell when they're aroused, but... Um, yeah. There, there think, can be think some about it, Cammy. Signs, Gilmore but. Girls streaming twenty four seven in I, your you goggles. You know what? Let's be fair. <laughs> oh, I Lord. never ever watch Gilmore Girls on the internet. I only watch Gilmore Girls uh, in bed while I'm getting oh, nice. ready to go to sleep. And we love you for it. <laughs> oh, jeez. Um, <laughs> you can you can speak in the yeah, yeah, it's yeah, okay. I know. It just I love Gilmore Girls too. We're having a moment here. That, does does yeah. your wife? Like the Gilmore Girls, Josh. Never seen it. She says she's never seen it, and I have to admit oh. I never have either. Okay. Here's the thing: I avoided watching it for years and years. I didn't want to have anything to do with it, and then I accidentally watched it once when I was sick. <laughs> have you? Have, have you? Let, let me put it. This oh, way. I've been watching it for years. Oh, I've seen Pretty the whole. I've seen yeah. the whole thing. I think I started around season five. I've missed like the last couple of seasons. So, oh, it's been gone for so a while. Josh, oh yeah, I know. You, I know. You, unfortunately. Uh, you're a little bit long, younger than I am, but um, um, it, it, did you ever see the old Dragnet in reruns? Remember oh, that yeah. show? Dragnet? Yeah. Think Dragnet for women. Yeah. What? Yeah. That doesn't yeah. make any sense. No, it totally does. I mean, there's no, no. weapons and stuff, and okay, you I don't have the seen... baby drowning in the bathtub. It's the talking <laughs> After aspect smoking. of it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I yeah. can see that. See, it's, Chris it's always gives me shit because ra- they talk fast. R- rapid and... fire dialogue yeah. between a bunch of women. Yeah. Well, in no, the there's Dragnet men. style. That fast Trust me. There's men. There's men. And yeah. it's empty dialogue. Yeah. Oh, well, whatever. so is Dragnet. Kind oh, my of. God. It's, like it's so much less my, empty. My partner, Joe Gannon, and I <laughs> checked out a car burglary. Burglary. <laughs> I can't even do at it. Least, at least the Lorelai's can pronounce things. Yeah. Exactly. I, wouldn't it be great to do a mashup between Jack Webb on Dragnet and the, Lore, and the Lorelai's <laughs> from the Gilmore Girls? Please, someone out there in the chat room. Get that done, please. Yeah. That would be like the perfect <laughs> meshing of, of Dr. Normal and my relationship. Ba- back in the day when, when we had the tape um, answering machines, you know, with the, with the little cassette tapes, I actually once took a whole bunch of audio off of Dragnet and did a mashup on tape so people would call and they'd immediately get the dun, 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 and you'd hear, you think you're pretty high and far out, aren't you, kid? You know, this was my answering nice. machine. So. I suddenly want to do something crazy nice. with my voicemail. There you go. Yeah. So, uh, Cammy, which of the two Gilmore girls would be the better companion for the doctor? Ooh. I think the question is which of the two Gilmore girls would be a better partner for Joe Friday? No, no. no. <laughs> he's I, not I talking. Say Rory. Dr. Normal, he's not talking about you. He's talking about Doctor Who. Oh, God. I, I want to say Rory. I would agree 100%. Yeah. Josh, Rory. Do you watch Doctor Rory. Who? Yeah. Do I'm watch- afraid to answer that question. <laughs> No, it's okay. You'll have fans on either side of you. Exactly. Because I don't, but not because of any, just because I've never, I've never happened across it. There's tons of shows that I would love to see, like Babylon 5 and Battlestar Galactica that are all pop culture. What's, what's your I would, favorite sci-fi? I would sci-fi. lose geek points for admitting that I don't, because I love sci-fi, but I just have never seen those shows. I, I feel like if I jump into one in the middle, if I don't watch it from the beginning, I'll be missing the experience. No, I really game. agree. I understand that. That's I my agree problem completely. with the new Battlestar, Batter, Battlestar yeah. Galactica. Dr. Boy, Normal's it's, not been, talking anymore. I've been working off of not much sleep. Um, what I was going to ask is, I think every person in technology, every geek, is driven by 
some sort of sci-fi or something that they saw that they said that's what I want and that's why I want to do this. What was yours? I mean, what what, what did you movies, TV, books? What what got you into this? Sci-fi wise. Um, you know, it was probably gaming. Um, I, like I said, I, I started, I started with computers when I was five mm-hmm. and, you know, honestly, when I was, you know, younger up through, you know, 10, 12, 16, 18, whatever it was, it was the kind of main focus of my computer stuff until the internet came along. And so things like, uh, the, you know, the final fantasy series, Japanese role-playing games, um, and the stuff, you know, I still consider myself a gamer and I, you know, look to those as like, the, the high, you know, their, their interactive art of our day. So that was probably a, you know, a gateway. Um, and now I'm just, I'm, I'm big into sci-fi. Read every word that Charlie Strauss writes, that Cory Doctorow writes, mm. uh, Neil Stevenson. I mean, I, I find and devour just about every kind of sci-fi I can. But there really wasn't a, you know, a, a gateway into sci-fi reading other than, than gaming. Gaming was the big thing for me in the, uh, the kind of formative decade of my life. So was it all uh, video game based, or was there any RPG for you? Like, are you talking like real life RPG? Like, no, game? no, no, no. Although you can or, answer that as well. I was actually just specific. <laughs> no, I was actually. sitting around a table with a bunch of dice and some pizza. It was what I was discussing. Um, but I, I tried it. I had a, a really good friend through grade school who was also into, into gaming, and it was mostly, you know, like nintendo super nintendo genesis stuff Mm -hmm. but not see back then it wasn't cool to be a gamer back then we were you know the nerdy kids because we would have a sleepover at one or the other's house every weekend and we would rent a game with the sole purpose of beating it and adding it to the list of the games that we finished and you know one of us would have a notebook and be you know drawing out the map of the dungeon we were in in zelda or something or writing down those stupid grid passwords in Mega Man. And so we could, you know, we kind of collaborated to do this. We would stay up all night long, you know, till the the dawn of the next day, and then just, you know, sleep for a few hours the next day. And that was, I mean, that was kind of the the focused obsession before it was cool. See, now you say gaming, and you think, you know, college kids get together in the dorm, and everyone, you know, plays Halo and shoots each other, or they yeah. play Madden or something, and it's kind of taken on a different aspect. And there's still people who do it for, you know, kind of the love of the art form and just, I mean, just because it's fun too. I mean, most of the gaming I do these days is on the Wii with my kids, but um, that was the formative thing. The RPG question, had I had more people around that were into it, I probably would have done it. Mm-hmm. I, I tried it a few times with that that friend of mine who I'd always game with, um, but we just did never have, you know, anyone who was good enough at it to, to kind of keep it going and sustaining it. But I had fun when we, when we played it. Yeah. I did a little RPG when I was a kid. <laughs> it's okay. You admit that. It's all right. It's okay. Dr. I'm, Normal looks at me funny every time I'm I say too it. too old. To, I mean, it, well, D&D did come out kind of later I, when I, I was D&D a kid. I played D&D also but, cyberpunk, though. But, I mean, I was, I was just all original Star Trek, man. I mean, it was like, you know... Yeah. The early grades, you know, and you'd go out there and you be Spock and I'll be Kirk. And wow, know. I mean that, that actually brought back a question. You asked what was my gateway to sci-fi, and I can't believe I didn't remember this, but it was Star Trek: The Next Generation. Nice. Yes. Watched every episode. I had you know the nitpickers guide that would go over every you know discontinuity of the storyline. I have the technical manual for the Enterprise. In fact, I still have these upstairs in my office. I have a, a set of, of uh, blueprints for the Enterprise D Oh, that uh, make yeah. very nice wall hangings. Um, they, they've yeah. been doing those for like so wait, wait. Uh, 40 years or something. I, really. usually, I usually lose, but I feel confident asking, who's your favorite captain? Picard, no question. Well, yeah, I think he... All right, let me I ask the studio answered. audience. Dude, Captain Pike, pilot episode for the win. Oh, yeah. I, I'm, I, Zoe? Okay. I, I don't know. I, I never really got into okay. She's on date night. Okay, She's that's just like fine. going, why you know am what? I here? No, Please help me. Josh and I, <laughs> we win. I'm out of the house. I don't have to watch babies. I'm ecstatic. Right yeah, now. <laughs> Josh and I win because that's two against one and one. So what? I finally win. <laughs> I, I always get overruled. I always work? get overthrown with the Picard issue. No one else ever sides with me on the Picard issue. Yeah, but, and I finally yeah. can win. Yeah, I have to back off on on yeah. Chris's point though, because you know, in a later episode, he ends up in a wheelchair with three blinking lights, so it's just kind of yeah. like <laughs> that's the coolest wheelchair 
ever. <laughs> There's a guy in Canada that has that, and it also has a hot cocoa yeah. dispenser built into Exa- it. <laughs> That's actually what you're waiting for in the mashup is like Spock getting some hot cocoa <laughs> during the uh, during the Inquisition, right? Oh boy, guys in the chat room, if you're not like over forty, um, just mm, go watch some TV right now. You just like not get this. There's Answer only, with one B. There's or really two. only one person burr, here over burr. forty. Oh, that's true. Sorry, babe. Actually, I'm going to change my answer anyways. I'm going to go with Captain Jonathan Archer because Scott Bakula. Sweet rules. Yeah, I can respect that. And he had the cutest little yeah, dog. What happened to that series, though? It man. took the crapper. Yeah, dog on it, man. Country and western theme. Did, yeah. Did anything yeah, yeah. else? Hello. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, and, so well. and, of course, we have something to look forward to in the Star Trek world, the new J.J. Abrams Star Trek thing. Somebody actually tweeted the picture of the Enterprise that they kind of retroed out. To, it kind of doesn't oh, look... Oh, was e- that what you were babbling on about yesterday? <laughs> yeah, the, the pictures of the new the new old Enterprise came yeah. out on the internet yeah. this week. And a couple of weeks ago were um, some some cast pictures of the new bridge crew. Oh, I got to I got to see those. How did, how yeah, did it look? Yeah, I up uh, Ain't It Cool News or something. I'm sure they're everywhere. They're really um I, I don't know. The guy they cast as Kirk looks like he belongs on some teenage drama show. Oh. He looks about 17. Tiger oh, Beat magazine. Don't say that. Every, everyone else looks good, but I uh, do that? They have Kirk just it, it just yeah. doesn't work. Didn't we already do that sort of in the next generation no, when we, they flash back to Picard and he had like this long flowing hair and he gets like stabbed by the Nosigan, right? <laughs> or as I call him the sausage sausage sausages. Not sausages. Sausages. That was a great episode though. But they were the sausages. With Q. With Q? Yeah, I like anything with Q. Bacon. Uh, Bacon. Oh lord. Yeah, the, the new oh, wait. the new the, the new Kirk looks like he belongs on American Idol and not Star Trek. Okay. Yeah. We need to wrap up after us, but I, I have to ask where you stand on the bacon issue. Where I stand is on the bacon issue? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Everything is better with bacon. Yes. Good man, Josh. I actually have a, a, a new... My, the latest sticker on my laptop is from Diesel Sweeties. I've got a taste of Bacon is a vegetable. Ooh. Um, my daughter once gave up meat. She decided to be a vegetarian. She lasted 10 days. She had to uh, give back in because she could not have life without bacon. <laughs> Good time. There is no life without bacon. There is no life without bacon. Well, Josh, thank you so much for joining us for the show. We've had a really lovely evening. I think we've covered uh, just about everything on the planet. <laughs> That's right. And off thank the planet, Thank you so too. much for having me. I have had a wonderful time. I'll come back any day. I love it. Fantastic. Well, we maybe, had a great time. Maybe next time we'll, we'll lure you down to our studio. There yeah, we go. that would be fun. Okay. And thank you uh, to the studio audience. Yes. Two weeks in a row we've had Chris at work, and now he's brought his lovely wife. And, and I promise tonight was the last night I'll ever use that F word again. Thank you so okay. much. I believe, unless I'm mistaken, that next week we are joined by Marshall Kirkpatrick. We are joined by yeah. Marshall Kirkpatrick. All right. Everybody have a great night. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, chat room. Thank Thanks, you, everyone. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>